everyone, I'm Kim, and I'm so glad you're here today. We're going to worship together shortly, but before we do, let me share some announcements with you. Remember that there will not be any Wednesday night activities for the month of June. We will start back on Wednesday, July 6th, and we will get you more information in the coming weeks. We want to let you know that the church office will be closed for Memorial Day on Monday, May 30th. If you need to speak with a pastor, you can still call the church office and be connected with one of them. Next Saturday, June 4th, the annual Honey Bee Festival returns to Lafayette. Our church is going to be the water station that day and we're gonna need your help. We will be serving water on the front steps of the church from 8 a.m. to 5. And if you are able to volunteer to help, please call the church office to sign up. This is a great opportunity for the church to serve the community and show them that we love them. Next Sunday, June 5th, we will be having Family Worship Day. This means that our children will be in the service with us the whole time. 
This is an abbreviated service with elements to help involve our children. We will also be ce celebrating communion next week, so think about helping your kids prepare to better understand what is going on. We're looking forward to a fun day. Also, next Sunday, immediately following the service, there will be a Camp Airborne Volunteer Meeting and the Fellowship Hall. If you plan on helping with Camp Airborne, please make plans to be there. You can sign up to volunteer or register your kids now at CampAirborne.com. Beginning Tuesday, June 14th, our kids' ministry will have Trippin' Tuesdays. There are four dates in June and July where Mrs. Jordan has planned outings for the kids and parents. You'll meet at the church at 9 a.m. and then caravan to the outing that day. You will transport and stay with your kids for the outing. These are going to be fun days, so make plans to be part of it. Mark your calendars for Sunday, June 26 at 5 p.m. We will have a church cookout at the Highland Club. It'll be a great time to get together and just enjoy being the family of Christ followers. The pool will be open and you can come enjoy the evening. We would love to see you be part of all these upcoming events. Remember how vital community is for our growth in Christ. We're so glad that you're here today. Take a moment to pray and get ready to meet with God as we worship together. That's in store. Your mercy's raining down, and I stand amazed. You call my name, and I'm lost in your gaze. Mercy's raining down, and everywhere I see, you are a God who cares for me. You are a God who cares for me.
everyone, I'm Kim, and I'm so glad you're here today. We're going to worship together shortly, but before we do, let me share some announcements with you. Remember that there will not be any Wednesday night activities for the month of June. We will start back on Wednesday, July 6th, and we will get you more information in the coming weeks. We want to let you know that the church office will be closed for Memorial Day on Monday, May 30th. If you need to speak with a pastor, you can still call the church office and be connected with one of them. Next Saturday, June 4th, the annual Honey Bee Festival returns to Lafayette. Our church is going to be the water station that day, and we're going to need your help. We will be serving water on the front steps of the church from 8 a.m. to 5. And if you are able to volunteer to help, please call the church office to sign up. This is a great opportunity for the church to serve the community and show them that we love them. Next Sunday, June 5th, we will be having Family Worship Day. This means that our children will be in the service with us the whole time. This is an abbreviated service with elements to help involve our children. We will also be celebrating communion next week. So think about helping your kids prepare to better understand what is going on. We're looking forward to a fun day. Also, next Sunday, immediately following the service, there will be a Camp Airborne volunteer meeting in the Fellowship Hall. If you plan on helping Camp Airborne, please make plans to be there. You can sign up to volunteer or register your kids now at CampAirborne.com. Beginning Tuesday, June 14th, our kids' ministry will have Trippin' Tuesdays. There are four dates in June and July where Mrs. Jordan has planned outings for the kids the church at 9 a.m. and then caravan to the outing that day. You will transport and stay with your kids for the outing. These are going to be fun days, so make plans to be part of it. Mark your calendars for Sunday, June 26 at 5 p.m. We will have a church cookout at the Highland Club. It'll be a great time to get together and just enjoy being the family of Christ followers. The pool will be open and you can come enjoy the evening. We would love to see you be part of all these upcoming events. Remember how vital community is for our growth in Christ. We're so glad that you're here today. Take a moment to pray and get ready to meet with God as we worship together. stand to our feet. We're here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I hope you came ready. Our God is good. We celebrate His goodness today. You guys awake? Let's worship together this one. He's coming on the clouds. Let's sing it out together. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. Broken hearts declare His praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Sing it out. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, His 
God is good, is he not? Amen. He is the lion and the lamb, and we celebrate him today. And because of who he is, we can build our lives on him today. We can celebrate that goodness, that grace that he pours out on us. So let's continue to worship this morning as we make the declaration that we will build our lives on the Lord. truth together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone. Christ alone. Weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace.
we'll get to see him face to face. And we can trust in him today. Let's celebrate with these words. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. Just in his righteousness alone, all the stand before the throne, Christ Jesus, that he is our Lord. He's Lord of all. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Once you want, uh, just join with me and praise the Lord one more time. That's why we're here today, to declare him. He's our king. He's our glorious king. He's worthy of our praise. He's lion and lamb. He's worthy of everything that our lips could say, of everything that our lives could give, he's worthy of that. And so I pray that as we move into this service, as we continue to sing, as we look at his word, that will challenge us with that very question, is Jesus my king? My prayer is that that will already be on our hearts right now. Be thinking about that, be pondering that, be asking that, be praying that to him in just a moment as we pray together. We've got some uh, things coming up, so if you're a guest of ours, thank you so much for being here. We want to help you connect and get to know our church, what's going on. We'd love to connect with you, share with you all the stuff that, that's happening in our church life. And so if you would uh, do us the honor of filling out a card, I've got a gift for you. You can come see me at the table at the end of the service. I'd love to get you can also text the word guest to 423-455-9458, and that will uh, initiate that conversation. Well, we, we've got, we have an opportunity before us that we have to do. We
And we are affected deeply by him. That's where the blessing comes from. We need Jesus. Amen? We need Jesus. We did not make it hot in here so that you would, like... Uh, it's not intentional. We're, we're working on it. You, n- you need to pray, and <laughs> uh, we have a, a, a 25 or something year old system that is not working. So, thanks for being here anyway. Um, we're not trying to make it feel like hell, okay, and try to get you out of it. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Though trusting Jesus will keep you from going there. All right, but that was not intentional. All right. We need Jesus. We uh, need him as he is seen in this text. And in Revelation, we get him. We, we get the, the full picture. We get the glorious, magnificent, amazing picture of our Savior. Sometimes raw and in dynamic pictures. And so we are going to take a break after this week. And so I want to just kind of look at where we've been. What have, what have we seen about this Jesus? What have we understood? We're going to take a little break. We're going to walk through some Proverbs through the summer, and we'll come back to Revelation in the fall. But before we do, I want to remind us, and I want to remind myself of who Jesus presents himself to be in the first six chapters of Revelation. And in these chapters, we remind ourselves that we must, we must determine what we will do with this king. See, that's the thing about Jesus, is that Jesus demands a response. When Jesus was brought before Pilate, Pilate goes to the people and he says, what should I do about this Jesus? You and I must ask ourselves the same question. And so we see Jesus, we see him high and exalted, we see him lifted up, lofty, the slaughtered lamb at the center of the throne of God, giving his very life so that you and I can have uh, eternal life in him. And he begins opening these scrolls. He is in charge. He is on his throne. And you and I have to do something about it for our lives. And I can't do that for you. Your neighbor can't do that for you. Your spouse can't do that for your mom, your dad. This is something you must grapple with. Who is this Jesus and who is he to me and what will I do because of who he is. And that brings us to the question of today's message. And this is a question we must all ask. Is Jesus my king? Is Jesus my king? I would imagine most of us wouldn't, wouldn't de- debate or discuss that Jesus is the king. But the question we must all ask, is Jesus my king? king. Is he my king? This is a question you must wrestle with. You must. If you do not wrestle with it today, you will wrestle with it one day, but it may be too late. Being presented with who Jesus is in these passages demands a response on my part, on your part. So how will we respond? Let's look at four things particularly that we must do if Jesus is truly our king. The first we find in Revelation chapter 1, 7 and verse 17. And what we see is that when Jesus is my king, I will keep my eyes on him. When Jesus is my king, I'm going to keep my eyes on him. Look at what happens in these verses. This is the vision John sees. And he sees in verse 7, he says, Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, 
even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him, so it is to be. Amen. Verse 17. When I saw him, John says, I fell at his feet like a dead man. He laid his right hand on me and said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. You see, in these verses, I want to remind us that we must look on Jesus. He is holy, majestic, and dazzling, but he is able to be looked upon as well. He is not like he was portrayed. He's not like God was portrayed to Moses. When Moses said, show me your glory, the Lord says, I can't because anyone who looks on me will die. And so God proceeded to hide Moses in the cleft of the rock and just let him look at a glimpse of him on, uh, 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 at the tail end of his glory. Similar, something similar with Elijah happened where he could not look upon him, but he, he heard his voice in the whisper. And, and, and so you and I, we, we have the opportunity to look on Jesus' face. And one day we will see him face to face, but we can look on him. He is not unavailable to us. We may see him. Jesus had, has made God gazable, that we can look on him. And it's imperative that we look to him and look directly to him. It's easy to focus on what's happening, isn't it? We mentioned in our prayer time just a moment ago a horrific event that happened in our world this year, this week. It's easy to look and see, oh, this is happening, and this is happening, and put our focus in so many different places. And if we continue to do that, we will go insane. I remember when COVID began. And I remember that every day I was grasping at numbers and charts and news feeds and trying to figure out what in the world, how do, you, how do you lead a church in the middle of this crazy mess? And guess what? It made me insane. I had to just put it all away and say, I can't look on this anymore. I just have to figure out what I need to do with Jesus, and that's all I can do. And the same thing is true for us. If we focus on all the things that are happening— all the good things, all the bad things, all the things surrounding us, then it will take our gaze off of, the, off of Jesus, off of our King. The enemy wants us to focus on all the wrong things and bad things in the world. Jesus wants us to acknowledge what's going on, but to look at the hills, to look on the horizon and see Jesus, King Jesus, is coming. And we have all confidence and trust that in the end it'll be okay. We look to him. We look on Jesus. And when we do, it should take our breath away. What happens to John when he sees Jesus? He falls out, man. He's in the floor. He can't, ima he can't believe what he's seeing. He he lays on the floor like a dead man. Jesus ought to take our breath away, but what I love is that Jesus comforts him right away. Don't be afraid. Listen, friends, King Jesus is our king and he is near. And may we look to him and keep our eyes upon him and be not afraid but have confidence because he is in control. When Jesus is our king, we keep our eyes on him. When Jesus is our king, I will listen for the Spirit's leading. So when Jesus is our king, we're going to look. We're going to use our eyes. We're going to look. When Jesus is our king, we're going to listen. We're going to listen in the churches as the, the, uh, the message from Jesus, written by the angel to every single one of these churches, every single one of them, it says, let anyone who has ears listen. 7, 2, 7, 2, 11, 2, 17, 2, 29, 3, 6, 3, 13, and 3, 22. We see every single one, every single church, it says you better 
listen. Listen for the Spirit. Listen to what the Spirit has for you. Jesus told the churches to have a listening ear for the Spirit's instruction. We must not simply take our own initiative in life, expecting God to be obligated to act on our ideas and plans. Some of these churches had messed up by doing the things they wanted to do, doing it their way and the way the people around them influenced them to do it. Jesus wants us not to listen to the world around us or our own best judgment. He wants us to listen and hear from heaven. Each of these messages deals with one thing. It says, let everyone who has ears listen. The one who conquers will blank. The one who conquers will have all these things. So every single one of them, the formula is the same. If you have ears, you better listen. The Spirit is speaking and he's speaking to those who want to conquer. And if you want to conquer, and if you do conquer, this is what you get. And every church got a different promise that eventually we see happen in, and be fulfilled in Revelation 20 through 22. The thing here that we must see is that if we want to last and conquer and have victory in Jesus in our lives and conquer as the Lamb conquers for us, now we got to listen. We got to listen to the Spirit and what He has to say. We have to listen to, to heaven and Jesus and what He wants us to do and not just take things in our own hands. We do, we're really good at that, aren't we? We're really good. My, one of my favorite prayers is, you know, Lord, I'm going on this trip. Please give me traveling mercies. You know? And it's okay. You can pray that. It's all right. The Lord does that. But it's funny. Did we ask God if we could go there? Maybe he didn't want us to. We love to ask God to bless our well-laid plans, don't we? And that's a, a silly joke, okay? Pray, pray for travel mercies. Go on your, you know, go wherever you're going tomorrow to celebrate Memorial Day. I'm not saying that, but what I'm just saying is that we do really good making our plans, laying them out, and saying, Oh God, while you're at it, could you bless this? What if we flip the script and said, Lord, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? I'm not going to move unless you tell me to move. Guess what? The Lord will bless that. No question. So when Jesus is my king, I will listen for the Spirit's leading. The third thing we see is when Jesus is my king, I will fall before him in worship. In chapters 4 and 5, we, we saw this, man. We, we, we worshiped too. I mean... The Lord met with us through these weeks as we worshiped him here on earth. But the thing is, is it just can't be one week. You know, it can't be one day a week on Sundays. Our lives should be categorized by ones who fall down before him in worship. So if Jesus is our king, we're going to look to him with our eyes. We're going to listen for him with our ears. We're going to worship him on our knees. We see this picture in Revelation 4 and 5 that, and, and we, you know, we, challenge, we were challenged to put on new glasses and see what's taking place already around us that we get to join in every week. We get to join in every week with the rejoicing that is in heaven, with the worship that is in heaven, declaring that Jesus and Jesus alone is worthy, worthy of our lives, worthy of our worship, worthy of our all. We have the opportunity in our lives now to join in with heaven's worship of our Savior. Worship is so important to us and for us because it does something very important. Our worship of Jesus today, tomorrow, days to come, it puts our lives in perspective. It puts my heart in perspective to realize I am not king of my life. This world is not worthy of my worship. Jesus and Jesus alone is. When we practice worship, when we practice now, and don't wait till we get to heaven, but we practice now falling before our Lord and Savior every day in worship, we put our hearts in the right posture to be prepared for eternal worship of Him. It puts our life in perspective today. Worshiping Jesus helps us 
refrain from worshiping the things on earth. Declaring Jesus our King now prepares our hearts for the moment we join heaven in person to lift high the name of the slaughtered lamb. So may we fall down and worship as the elders did, and may we bow before him now. The final thing that we see in chapter 6 is when Jesus is my king, I will walk in his way no matter what's ahead. Look at chapter 6, verse 1. I want to remind you. Then I saw the Lamb open one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a loud voice, like thunder, come. Jesus is coming, and we have the opportunity to follow him. So let's remind ourselves before we get into this one. When Jesus is our king, we look to him with our eyes. We listen for him with our ears. We bow before him on our knees, and we walk in the way he leads us. We follow him. We follow him. He's coming, and we follow. We must walk in Jesus' way no matter what the potential crunch with the world that is fighting against his way and his kingdom. Going forward, we will see that walking in his way will never be easy, but it will be worth it. The way of the world is death, we see, but the way of our king is eternal life. Remember I said at the beginning, today is a message that requires a response from you and me. We cannot sit idly by being confronted with who this Savior is, the Savior who is already coming, who is already king, and will be king as well. We may not sit idly by and just wait for the opportune moment or when the time is right or when the best time of my life could be or when I get things in my life straightened up or when this takes place or whatever. No. This is something we must do now. We must ask the question, is Jesus my king? And will I look on him? Will I listen for him? Will I bow before him? And will I follow him and walk in his way we have to know and we have to decide now don't wait don't wait maybe you're here today and circumstances in your life have convinced you maybe that you're not even worthy of this Savior of Jesus and what he's done. And what I would tell you is you are in great company because neither am I. I'm not worthy. I can't do enough good. I haven't done enough good. I, I never will do enough that will satisfy the righteous requirement of the law of God. I can't do it. But that's the beauty that Jesus came so you wouldn't have to. And we place our faith and trust in him. And we say, Jesus, I can't, but you can. I'm not king or queen of my life, but you, I want you to be king. And when we come to Jesus in that posture, with that heart, with that mindset, he receives us. He gives us, as the song we sang earlier, He clothes us in righteousness. Like a, like, a, like a bridal dress, like a white wedding dress. He clothes us, making us ready to be His children and in a relationship with Him. Would you today, if that's you that I described earlier, or you just know you need to trust Jesus, would you call out to him and say, Jesus, would you make me?
clean? Would you bring righteousness into my life? Would you save me? Would you forgive me? Would you be my king? You got to say it in your words. I'm just giving you ideas. This is something I can't do for you. I can only take you as far as I can. And you have to make the decision on your own. But maybe you're like me here today. I trusted Jesus Christ at the age of six. I've known him as my savior a long time. And I'm thankful for that, I really am. But I've messed up. I've made mistakes. I make mistakes every day. And so I need him to be more and more my king every day. I need to keep my eyes on him more. I need to listen for him more. I need to bow before him and worship more. I need to follow him more. So maybe you're like me and you just need to come to a moment today and just say, Jesus, help me. Help me to really answer the question, are you my king? And say, yes. I want to follow you and I want to trust you in all things. However the Lord is working in your life, he calls you to a response today. To to do something. You got to do something with Jesus today. You got to. And that's between you and him. We're going to sing. Our worship team is going to come and lead us as we sing. The very words. We're going to sing this chorus. It says, you are my king. And may we be able to sing it with, with truth in our hearts. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. Would you work in our midst today, God? Would you help us? Help us, Lord, to fall, fall before you, to worship you, to listen, to keep our eyes on you, and to follow you, Jesus. You are my king, and I'm so thankful. I pray today you'd be somebody else's king today, Lord, for the very first time. Work in our hearts and lives. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand? As we stand, we're going to respond. If God is working in your heart, you come. I'd love to help you. I'd love to pray with you. You come. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me. Because you died and rose again. Let's sing that much again. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me. Because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love. my joy to honor you in all I do I honor you I'm forgiven I'm forgiven because you were forsaken and I'm accepted you were condemned and I'm alive well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, my joy to honor you in all I do I honor you let's make this declaration you are my 
declaration today, right? Jesus is our king and we honor him with our lives. And may we do that as we go here in just a few moments. I want to remind you of two things. Number one, continue to worship through giving as we leave. Um, I know that um, that may seem like this really pragmatic thing that we give, but that's a huge part of our worship. That's how we Respond to what God has blessed us with. We give back to him what he's entrusted to us. And so I would encourage you, do that here in the room. There's boxes in the back, or you can text any dollar amount to 84321. Uh, or if you're joining us online, you can do that through our website, lafayettefirst.life slash give. I would encourage you to do that. Uh, secondly, remember this week, as we leave this room, you're not dismissed from this room. You are sent from this room. We are ambassadors for Christ, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and take that ambassadorship seriously. You have the opportunity to impact somebody's life with the gospel this week. So go and do that. You are sent out into the world. Have a great week.